This month is Halloween, originally a pagan festival where people celebrated the end of harvest. And it was also the time when people thought that the veil between this world and the spirit world was at its thinnest, and people would light huge bonfires to ward off spirits. If we fast forward a few thousand years, Halloween is now more about trick-or-treating and pumpkins than it is about the harvest. In the UK, we buy 24 million pumpkins every year for carving, and 12.8 million of those will be carved but not eaten. But how did pumpkins become such a massive part of the Halloween tradition and when did we stop eating them? Pumpkins like this one are actually a member of the gourd family which includes stuff like cucumbers and watermelon. They originally come from Central America and Mexico but now they grow in six continents all around the world. Their thick skins and really long shelf life made them perfect for storing over the winter and also for journeys across the sea. How did pumpkins end up becoming the heart of a pagan harvest festival? The original jack-o'-lanterns came from Ireland, where people would carve turnips or potatoes into the face of Stingy Jack. He was a really popular figure of Irish folklore, and he tricked the devil more than once. After, he was banned from heaven and hell and bound to wander the marshes for all eternity with only a coal lantern to light his way. In the 1800s, when there was a massive influx of Irish immigrants to America, they discovered pumpkin for the first time, which was a lot easier to carve than turnips, and the Halloween tradition was born. This Americanized version of Halloween has been exported all over the globe, and now families all across the UK are picking out their pumpkins to carve at Halloween. But how do you grow the perfect Halloween pumpkin? I'm off to meet the Royal Horticultural Society's star pumpkin grower to find out. My name is Matthew Oliver and I'm a horticulturist here in the Global Growth Vegetable Garden at RHS Garden Hyde Hall. I had three years where I grew giant pumpkins and it's quite an investment of time and skill, but I currently hold two records. I hold the giant UK squash record and also hold the record for the giant pumpkin uh, grown outdoors in the UK. So the only people that have grown a bigger pumpkin than me doing it under glass. Very exciting because they are basically the largest fruits on the planet. There is no other fruit that gets bigger than a pumpkin. So it's the, they're the king of the giant veg world. On the whole, pumpkins are really easy to grow. All they need is a good sunny, warm position, a nice fertile soil, and then a good water once a week. So if you're living in the south of the country, where we are, they seem to be really easy to grow and they're really exciting to grow because they grow so quickly. There's not many other fruits that will grow as quick as these do. We normally start sowing the seed about May time and then harvest is September, October. So we'll set four or five months, so very quick growing crop. This year I've probably grown about a dozen different varieties, but in previous years I've grown as many as 60, so a wide range. Yes, I think people should be growing their own pumpkins as well, because you get a lot more range and you can grow something completely different from what you'd be able to buy in the shops and have a really individual Halloween pumpkin. I think the best ones for people to grow at home are the small fruited varieties because the plants stay smaller, they don't take up so much space, you get a lot more fruit per plant and they're a lot easier to handle in the kitchen. Pumpkins like these ones take a lot of time, energy, water and care to grow. So this year we're challenging people to eat their pumpkins, all the stuff that you set aside when you're carving to stop 18,000 tonnes of these gorgeous pumpkins from going in the bin every year. If you've never cooked a pumpkin before, you can basically eat all of it. I love roasting the seeds with salt and paprika, but you can also cook the flesh and the skin, the whole thing. Okay, so a lot of people when they carve their pumpkin at Halloween don't use the inside bits because they're weird and they're squidgy, but there's loads that you can do with them. So I've come to an expert and Nina is gonna show us today uh, how you can cook pumpkin quesadillas with pumpkin guts and also ice cream. Right, so today we're gonna be using our pumpkin guts to make some pumpkin and black bean quesadillas with some lovely caramelized red onion. Next, I'm going to start on my beans. So I want my beans to kind of cook down and be still a bit solid, but slightly sort of creamy. This bit is optional, so if you're making this for children, you may not want to add chili, but I'm gonna use just a half of green chili, just to add a bit of heat. Just scooped out the guts from the pumpkin and I've taken the seeds out. 
So obviously some of the smaller sort of transparent seeds you can keep in, but the nice sort of thick husky ones you want to take out for this um, because you want to make a nice sort of smooth kind of puree almost when you cook this down. So the onions are cooking down nice and softly and I'm just going to now add a little splash of water. That's just going to carry on letting them soften rather than browning. Alright, so there's nice caramelised onions. Um, and my kids did point out that these do look a bit like worms. Um, so if you are going for a themed, gruesome Halloween sort of meal, you've got your worms here. So I'm just going to finish off the beans. They're bubbling away nicely. The liquid's almost all absorbed and I'm getting a nice sort of creamy sauce on them. And so just to finish them off, I'm going to add a bit of fresh coriander and a squeeze of lime. So now we're done. So all we need to do now is to assemble them. And then we're going to get a frying pan out and then we're going to cook them in a frying pan with a bit of butter or oil um, to melt the cheese and to get the tortillas nice and toasted. So you can use the inside of your pumpkin, so your pumpkin guts, to make ice cream as well. So I've just pulled these out, taken the seeds out, and I roasted them with a bit of white miso and a little bit of maple syrup to get it nice and soft and caramelized and delicious. So I'm going to use this with some silken tofu, a bit of maple syrup, some coconut oil, a few spices, and some vanilla. And I'm going to make a lovely sort of spiced pumpkin pie miso pumpkin pie ice cream. And then I'm going to crush in some digestive biscuits and stir that through um, so you get that nice crunch contrast with the soft creaminess of the ice cream. So I've made some waffle cones here with some charcoal. So you've got some nice black cones to go with the sort of Halloween theme. Um, so I'm just going to get myself a nice scoop of ice cream. Okay, voila! And now it's your turn to take up the pumpkin challenge. It's a really amazing bit of food. You can literally eat all of it apart from the stalk. So try Nina's recipe, try your own recipe and make sure no pumpkin gets left behind this Halloween.